This is the part two of the transport refrigeration introduction slide set. So rail car refrigeration is another portion of transport refrigeration. Rail car refrigeration is used for two general purposes. First, to refrigerate cargo, and second, for comfort cooling. Okay, now let's talk about both of those. Okay, refrigerate cargo would be the movement of goods that need to be refrigerated. Comfort cooling would be in passenger rail service. So that would be more of air conditioning for passenger rail. Rail car construction and installation is similar to refrigerated trailers. Most rail car refrigeration is provided by compression systems. Some rail car refrigeration systems are absorption systems. Compressors are usually driven from the rail car axle while in motion. An electric motor is used when the car is stopped. Some trailer refrigeration systems with diesel powered generators and motor driven compressors have been modified to be used in rail cars. The main differences are the additional structural elements to protect the refrigeration systems and the use of remote communication which is accomplished by either using satellite, cell phone, or radio frequency. Remember, trains are long, so you have to be able to get to the different components of the refrigeration to monitor and to control the temperatures. Intermodal shipping containers are used on ships, trucks, rail cars, and airplanes. For short distances, a container can be cooled with a eukaryotic plate or dry ice. For longer trips, intermodal shipping containers require compression refrigeration systems. The condensers in these type of containers are water-cooled because they may be inadequate airflow for air-cooled condensers. Compressors are usually driven by diesel power generator on the container. On a ship, the container can be plugged into the ship's power supply. Okay, so this is an example of intermodal container. It has a diesel power refrigeration container system. Refrigeration controls are right on the container, but they also are able to be um, accessed from elsewhere. Everything must be on that container. They come with cords that can be plugged into sh ship's power, okay, and they do most often have water-cooled condensers. Marine refrigeration is basically the same as land-based refrigeration, but designed for marine environments. The system components must be designed to withstand exposure to salt water and high humidity. Many yachts and sailboats are constrained by the amount of available electric power. The most efficient systems use a hermetic compressor that can operate on the power supplied by a solar panel. This is an example of a small marine refrigeration system. Okay, someone has their gauges connected to it but it's basically under a deck plate. It has to be small in size, has to be lightweight, and has to be able to cool, be cooled. The condenser has to be able to be cooled easily in the marine environment. Refrigerated storage space aboard yachts are commonly called cold boxes, and they're frequently exposed to tropical conditions. The cold box insulation and refrigeration systems are often sized for 90 degree ambient temperature with a recommended insulation value of R20 for refrigerator space and R30 for a freezer space. This is usually achieved with 4 inches of conventional foam insulation around the refrigerator or 6 inches around the freezer. Marine refrigeration systems are typically assembled from converted industrial or automotive refrigeration equipment. Larger systems tend to use open drive compressors and with eutetic plates, while smaller systems use flat plate evaporators and hermetic compressors. There are three common methods to cooling the condensers in marine refrigeration. Air-cooled condensers are the least expensive but when the ambient temperature increases, the amount of energy required by the compressor box becomes excessive. Water is 20 times more thermally conductive than air, and an endless supply is available on the other side of the hull in marine refrigeration. For this reason, many ships will use a keel cooler or heat exchanger cooled by pumped-in seawater. This is an example of a full marine refrigeration system. We have the hermetic compressor, we have the evaporator, and then we have what's called a keel cooler condenser. And the refrigerant lines actually go through the hole.
keel coolers run the condenser tubing outside the hull in the vicinity of the keel to take advantage of the seawater's ability to absorb heat. The keel is the lower portion of the boat. Keel coolers must be properly sized for their application. If the keel cooler is oversized, it may operate efficiently in warm water, but provide too much subcooling when the boat is in cold water. If it is undersized, the head pressure can become excessive in warm water, leading to high energy use. This is an example of a picture of how this is all installed. Since keel coolers are submerged in water, they're subjected to a wide range of temperatures and any chemicals or substances that may be in the water. To help minimize corrosion, keel coolers are equipped with zinc anodes. All a zinc anode is, is a metal spot or a metal plate that will take, that will actually attract the chemicals and the corrosion process and keep it away from the keel cooler and the hull. Okay, refer, here's a close up view of the, re, of the keel cooler outside portion. Heat exchangers provide economical operations across a wide range of operating temperature. A pump draws water in through an inlet of the hull of the boat. The water is passed through a heat exchanger where it absorbs heat from the high temperature refrigerant inside the compressor discharge line. That heat is released back outside the boat. So this is an example of a heat exchanger, okay? We have our warm liquid, ref we have our hot vapor refrigerant coming in and we have our warm liquid refrigerant going out. Cold seawater comes in and the warm seawater goes out. Now please note the counterflow. Whenever we do a heat exchanger with refrigerant, the refrigerant and the water flow in opposite directions. Okay, it provides better heat exchange, it provides better control. So if our water is flowing in one direction, our refrigerant is flowing in the other direction. So again, the basic principles of transport, marine, and rail refrigeration are all the same. We're using a vapor, a compressed vapor refrigerant system. We're using heat exchange either to the air or to water. It's just of a smaller scale, built to withstand the vibrations, and built to withstand a much wider ambient temperature range than you would consider for um, non-transport refrigeration. Face it, what's mounted on a building roof is not going to move across the country through wide ranges of different humidities and conditions. While transport refrigeration, especially those on the um, intermodal shipping containers, may even move outside the country and into different, different continents.